So let's see what he has to say about object oriented. And I technically pre watched this, but it's interesting. What one of the big problems with software, right, is that starting in the 80s, so prior to the 80s, everybody was just trying to solve real problems and trying to get computers to solve real problems, right? And then start. I hate to interrupt like 13 seconds into the video, but this is partially what I was saying. And I hate too much abstraction. In the older days, there was obviously less abstraction because as more time goes on, we get better ways of doing things, higher level programming languages, right? Like Java has more abstraction than something like C, where you are closer to the hardware layer. That's what I mean by the word abstraction. And so this is especially prevalent in front-end development, where you hardly even know what's going on under the hood anymore. I bet a lot of front-end developers hardly even know like what a web API is. But anyways, let's continue. Starting around the 80s, computers got fast enough that you had a lot more leeway around how you solve the problems, and people started making all these theories about how to uh, how to solve problems in the best way. And so object-oriented programming is like one of those theories, right? Oh, on the list of things in C++ that are wrong, object-oriented is wrong, right? Because of course, um, uh, Alan Kay invented the term object-oriented and it meant something else. It meant small talk, not C++. I'm not sure what he's talking about there. I mean, I believe him. I assume he's right. Anybody who's older in programming is usually right. The inventor of the term object-oriented, he's often quoted as saying what we call is not what he meant. I made up the term and I can tell you I didn't have C++ in mind. Okay, well, I'll just believe him. So like even the term object-oriented is wrong the way people use it. Anyway, so people came up with all these ideas about how to program. And then the problem is those ideas require entire belief structures, right? So if you go to program in C++ object-oriented world representation style, then you start to believe from the way that you're taught that programming work is about building the hierarchy of objects in the right way or something. But that's not actually solving a problem. It's just conforming to a belief structure that you've been given. After you've decided on that hierarchy of objects, you still don't have a program that solves any problems. Now you have to go write the program within that framework that you decided on, right? So I watched this video the other day. I don't even remember what he says in the rest of it. But regardless of what you believe and what programming paradigm you ascribe to, what he just said is 100% correct, right? Object-oriented programming itself doesn't solve a problem. It's just a way. And, and he's right. You get to a point where now... You're not actually dealing with like the code that solves a problem. Now you're dealing with the higher level thing. And maybe I'm using this word wrong, but I don't think I am. The abstraction. Now you add that layer of object-oriented programming abstraction on top of everything. And you're making your functions dance behind classes that have this weird hierarchy. You can't program like that unless you actually understand the world of object-oriented programming, all the principles, open, closed, this, that, it does take you away from being able to solve those problems in some way. It adds like a layer of complexity. Now, the reason it was created in the first place, there is a reason because some problems are hard and object-oriented programming can simplify a lot of really complex problems. It makes sense that it does exist. And so the problem is, as we get further and further away from real actual problems, more and more of what is taught to people as programming is actually not doing anything. It's just shuffling papers around on your desk, right? And so like the question of how do I do an interface that blah, 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 is just shuffling the papers around on your desk because it's not actually solving a problem. Like what I would say is write the editor and then write the plugins or whatever, write the functionality, make all the functionality work. And then if you're dispatching between them with an if statement and it feels kind of hacky and you need more abstraction for a very concrete reason, then put in a function pointer. But I wouldn't even do that. I would just have an if statement that turns them on or off for a long time because it's, it's actually a relatively, that part of writing an editor is so small and so another thing i agree with with what he said and i was actually reading an article about like solid principles this is why i'm going to make this point but people talk a lot about the dependency inversion principle like you should depend on abstractions and all that 
even if there's only one implementation of an interface or just one instance of a class that's going to be a dependency. Basically, what I'm getting at is like, if you've ever programmed in Java before, like an existing code base, you see that a class has dependency A. You go to the definition of dependency A. It's an interface. Okay, so you actually want to see the implementation. You want to see the actual functions and the code for class A. Then you have to find, okay, what implements class A? You find a class. It's an abstract class. You're just trying to look for the damn like implementation, just the actual code, not all these empty interfaces and abstract classes. Sometimes it's just so annoying, first of all. People feel the need to like over optimize or prematurely optimize things. Everything needs to be extensible, even though I just have like five classes. Why does it, everything have to be abstracted? Like what if 10 years from now I want to add a different dependency to this class? Well, I got to make it extensible. Why not just refactor it at that point? I'm not saying there's a perfect solution. Depending on how big your code base is, what the company standards are and all that, fine. But I think people do like, especially like the way it's taught in school, the way it was taught to me, it's like, these are like the principles and you shall not break these programming principles. But if you're going to be like practical, sometimes it's better to, sometimes it simplifies the code. In terms of what it solves, that I wouldn't even bother for a long time. Um, on the other hand, if you buy into a weird structure or many weird structures, which is what happens in order to preemptively solve this very small problem before it becomes a problem, you end up taking on all these very large belief structures that are actually very hard to conform to. And you have to conform to those belief structures all the time because that's what, that's what you made your program be. And it actually gives you a much bigger job to do than you actually have to do to solve the actual physical problem that you have in the objective world. All right. So that's that's the, the best thing that I can say about this. I mean, it's just so true. Like, how can anybody disagree with this video? Because he's right. Like, what if you wrote some code that perfectly solves a problem, but there's some violations of the solid principle sprinkled in there. Well, that could be an indication that your code just kind of sucks fine. And true, that can happen. Like you can, there is a such thing as just really badly written code, but you have code that solves the problem. Now you have a second problem. You have to make sure your code follows certain principles. And like he said, they're not always easy to conform to. It's not easy to make your code follow all the object-oriented programming principles. I saw this mentioned in another video before. We won't watch the whole video because it's 45 minutes, but I would recommend anybody go watch this video if you want to learn more about why object-oriented programming is bad. And when I say bad, I, I use object-oriented programming. I've used it. I don't think it's like the devil, but the way he describes it, it's basically assembly line programming. Developers are too dumb to make code that works. So you got to give them like building blocks and rules to make sure that they follow so that code can always be readable and extendable by like a new dev team that joins and things like that.